From West Virginia Public Broadcasting, this is a special edition of the Legislature Today. Good morning. I'm Beth Voorhees. We're bringing you live coverage of a public hearing on House Bill 2881. This is called the West Virginia Interstate Commerce Improvement Act. It prohibits counties and municipalities or other political subdivisions may not in adopt or enforce a local law ordinance, resolution, rule, or policy that creates a protected classification or prohibits discrimination on a basis not contained in state law. Here's some background. Since 2009, Fairness West Virginia, a statewide advocacy organization, has been working with communities to pass these types of ordinances. In a statement, Executive Director Andrew Snyder says these ordinances are important to extend protections in employment and housing based on sexual orientation and gender identity. Charleston, Huntington, Morgantown, Athens, and Harpers Ferry have all adopted these ordinances banning discrimination. The public hearing is just about to begin. It will be presided over by Delegate Gary Howell, who is the chair of the Government Organization Committee in the House. People have signed up to speak. He is certainly, he is right now currently giving them their instructions. Let's go ahead and go live to the public hearing in the House of Delegates chamber. Our first speaker will be Nadine Roper, followed by Laurel Kirksey. Go ahead. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, Natalie Roper with Generation Sorry. West Virginia. That's okay. Bad handwriting. Um, our board, Generation West Virginia, is dedicated to better attracting and retaining young talent in the state. And our board yesterday, which is comprising of both parties, people from all over the state, diversity of gender, um, diversity of beliefs and backgrounds, unanimously voted to oppose this bill. And that's because HB 2881 due to the, has negative effects on our ability to attract and retain young talent. By invalidating all local non-discrimination ordinances and policies, it removes protection for LGBT members of our community and municipalities, workplaces, universities, and public schools. And by doing so, it inhibits West Virginia's young talent retention by making our communities unattractive for young professionals, making our regions unattractive for businesses, making our universities unattractive to students, and making our communities unattractive to young families who want to send their children to public schools there. Thank you. Thank you. Next up, Laurel Kirksey, followed by Rich Stone Street. Good morning. Laurel Kirksey from the Alzheimer's Association, West Virginia chapter. At the Alzheimer's Association, we are intensely focused on the future because we firmly believe the future is a world without Alzheimer's. But between now and that great day, we know there will be significant increase in the number of people with Alzheimer's disease and the families we serve will face innumerable and ever-changing challenges. Limiting our community's ability to meet the changing needs of its most vulnerable citizens and protect the civil liberties of all citizens will have consequences we cannot yet predict. People with Alzheimer's and dementia are at greater risk of discrimination, and at certain stage of the disease, a person may not have the ability to challenge or prevent discrimination from occurring. What we do know and what is Alzheimer's disease does not discriminate. The disease do not, does not care if you're black or white, Christian or Hindu, straight or gay. We also know that certain populations face significant barriers accessing the Thank healthcare you. system, including discrimination. Next up, Rich Stone Street, followed by Karen Ireland. Rich Stone Street, president of the West Virginia State AARP. AARP rises today in strong opposition to this legislation. 
Civil rights are an important component of the housing law. Without protections from unfair treatment on the basis of age, gender, race, religion, sexual orientation, slash gender identity or disability, it may be difficult for some residents to remain in and be active within their community. It is important to note that age is presently not included among the protected classes for housing and real property in the West Virginia Code. I'm a Kanawha County resident and I'm a big fan of my state senator, Ed Gaunch. And a few weeks back in a committee meeting, he said, quote, the best government is the government closest to home, end quote. This proposed legislation flies in the face of that concept and ignores the wise comments of my senator. Finally, to suggest that this legislation is pro-business is misleading. If this legislation is adopted by this body, it will have a chilling effect on businesses presenting our Fortune 500 companies you, and others sir. as intolerant and unwelcome. Karen Ireland, followed by Elise Calgill. I'm Karen Ireland. I'm with West Virginia Citizen Action Group. As an American, I oppose this bill because it goes against what I know as a self-evident truth that all men are created equal. As a West Virginian, I oppose this bill because it moves our state in the wrong direction and limits our ability to grow. As a mother and a Catholic, I oppose this bill because it breaks the golden rule that we treat our neighbors as we would wish to be treated. And as a candidate for municipal office, I oppose this bill because it usurps the power of local government and inhibits its ability to protect its citizens from discrimination. Thank you. Elise Cowgill, followed by Justin McCohen. Good morning. A lack of non-discrimination laws currently affects thousands of LGBT West Virginians, but several communities have already taken it to set the precedent for taking steps in the right direction. These communities have made it clear that discrimination on the basis of sexual orientation or gender identity should be a thing of the past, and their local politicians have listened. I implore you to do the same, because as you represent this beautiful state, you help with each session to demonstrate and rewrite what it means to be a mountaineer. On behalf of West Virginia, West Virginians everywhere, I ask you to leave it something to be proud of, an all-inclusive community that celebrates all of its members. Thank you. Justin McCone, followed by Hannah Barker. I'm an educator in West Virginia, so I speak for the youth of West Virginia. Schools currently have a policy that prevent bullying based on gender identity and sexual orientation. Acceptance of House Bill 2881 does not prevent preferential treatment, as some may say. It directly endangers the lives of our children. Even if we adhere to the idea of sticks and stones may break my bones, but word will never hurt me, research proves otherwise. LGBT children are four times more likely to commit suicide, three times more likely to skip school, while 90% feel harassed. The acceptance of a regressive bill like this accepts and equips bullies with their literal sticks and stones and indeed words that leads to the deaths of children. Thank you. Thank you. Hannah Barker followed by Casey McCone. My name is Hannah Barker and I'm the Vice President of the West Virginia Gay and Lesbian Community Center and I'm talking to you on behalf of the young persons in the state of West Virginia. We live in a beautiful state, that is true, but guess what? Our heart inside is not beautiful anymore. Our heart inside will become diminished, will become blackened if this bill is passed. LGBT persons and everyone else in this world deserve to have, not, to have rights, to be non-discrimination. It is, they are not to be discriminated against based on anything, including sexuality. I am a young person. I want to leave the state. Do you know why? Because it's things like this that make me want to seek other states for equality, for non-discrimination. Please do not pass this bill on behalf of myself and the other young persons in this beautiful state. Thank you. Casey McCohen, followed by Andrew Schneider. My name is Cassie McCowan, speaking Sorry. on behalf of myself and anybody else who may feel the way that I do. Do not deny us our basic human rights. Do not rip protection out from underneath of our children. Allow us to function as adults who contribute to society. Allow society to belong to everyone, not just some. Be aware that diversity is not scary. 
be aware that blanketing discrimination with beneficial societal concerns does not make us blind to the wickedness here. I pay taxes to the very system that ostracizes me. I love my country, and I am proud to be an American. Am I privileged to live in a free nation? I would be if I were free. Thank you. Andrew Schneider, followed by Stephen Peck. I'm Andrew Schneider, Executive Director of Fairness West Virginia. This bill is known as the Abolishing Local Liberty Bill. And for good reason, because it takes democracy away from our local town and city councils. And for what purpose? To discriminate against the LGBT community. And, and by denying us the ability to seek protections at the local level, it makes us strangers to our own law. And that is not only wrong on, on a moral level, it is bad for business. It, it, guts the democratic process on the local level, which is so important as part of our democracy, where pure democracy really exists. And so we should all oppose this terrible legislation. Thank you. Thank you. Stephen Peck, followed by Ann Kelly Stenner. Thank you. Good morning. I am Stephen Peck. I represent the Open Table Ministry in Parkersburg. I stand in strong opposition to this bill. Several centuries before the Christian era, a commandment in the Hebrew Scripture tells us, love your neighbor as you love yourself. My point to this House and those who hear this testimony is that there are people of faith who strongly oppose this bill as it is hugely unjust. Furthermore, as a person of faith, I fully support, welcome, and affirm all persons of all sexual orientations and gender identities. And I seek earnestly to minister to those who've been harmed and marginalized due to their identity. Thank you. Thank you. Ann Kelly Stenner, followed by Dustin Teal. My name is Ann Kelly Skinner, and I am a male to female transsexual well into the process of transition. I stand here in opposition to the bill. Lead sponsor, Delegate Arvon, in defending her bill, wrote in a prepared statement, I embrace the opinions and views of all West Virginians. I, however, do not. I do not embrace those views of those who hate and those who would keep me down. You know, they have no place at the table. She also wrote, Unlike those that are waging obscene attacks and threats of violence against me and my colleagues, seven trans women in this country have already been murdered since February 7th, since January 17th of this year alone. I have been the victim of obscene threats. Every day, people like me are threatened. And she talks about arbitrary, arbitrariness. What's arbitrary, I find, is that she, as a protected class, as a born genetic woman, gets to enjoy the privileges and protections of her class. Your time is up. Dustin Teal, followed by Ellen Beal. Cut the mic off. Cut the mic off. Just by virtue of having the unfortunate um, misfortune of being born with a penis, and I am no less of a woman than she is, and I stand in opposition. Dustin Teal, followed by Ellen Beal. Thank you. I come today to speak in opposition to House Bill 2881. This bill goes against what so many West Virginians believe in. In multiple studies, including one by Columbia University, it has been found that the majority of mountaineers support adding sexual orientation and gender identity to the list of protected classes in the West Virginia Human Rights Act. When our state legislators wouldn't listen, people turned to city and town councils to have these protections passed. <clears throat> including in the smallest city, smallest town in the country to do so, Thurmond. But instead of working to fulfill that promise that mountaineers are always free, the state legislature is doing the exact opposite. Furthermore, this bill would accomplish exactly the opposite of what it claims it will accomplish. Time and time again, companies, and I have a list of over 130 companies who have said that they support adding sexual orientation and gender identity to protections, 
have been supporting these bit laws. In fact, Walmart came out in opposition to an identical bill that just became law in Arkansas. Thank, Thank you. you. Ellen Beal, followed by Ty Bollock. I am Ellen Beal, owner and operator of Ellen's Homemade Ice Cream in downtown Charleston. I am strongly against House Bill 2881. Republicans have been championing states and local rights for many years, but in this case, Republicans are abandoning their own principle of local government rights solely to further their agenda of hate and discrimination against LGBT. Young and talented people expect to live in tolerant, accepting locations. Legislation such as this will drive them away from West Virginia. Why is there such hate and anger towards LGBT who are such a natural and vital part of our community, state, and country? Thank you. Ty Bullock followed by Ryan Union. My name is Ty Bullock, and I'm a city councilman in Thurman, a business owner in Charleston, and a law student in Morgantown. Earlier this month, Thurman unanimously passed an ordinance that was an expression of our town's tolerance, our town's openness, and our democratic values. This was a decision that we, as a town, had the right to make. It was our decision, and we were proud to make it. Passing this bill would undermine the most fundamental component of the American system of government, the town hall meeting. Our country was founded inside the timber frames of town halls, not, not the marble walls of big government. As a business owner, I can tell you this bill has nothing to do with commerce. It is inconceivable to suggest that it would improve commerce and it is insulting to pose it as such. If a business cannot take the time to read the laws of a town, it has no place conducting business there. I have always been proud of our state's motto, Mountaineers are always free. West Virginians should be free to make decisions with our communities that Thank reflect you. our attitudes and values. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Ryan Union, followed by Doug Ivins. My name is Ryan Union. I'm here on behalf of several of my classmates at the WVU College of Law. On Wednesday morning, I woke up and questioned my decision to return to West Virginia. When I was 19, I left my home in Marion County and served in the United States Navy, where I was deployed in Operation Iraqi Freedom and Operation Enduring Freedom, after which I graduated magna cum laude from the University of Illinois. When it came time to decide to go to law school, I really questioned coming home to West Virginia. I would be lying if I said, in reflection, as an adult, I didn't grow up in a place full of homophobia and racism. I wasn't sure if I wanted to raise my kids in that environment, but as I looked around some 10 years after I had left, I thought West Virginia was going in the right direction. I thought West Virginia was changing, and just recently, we made positive national news with the work done in Thurmond, and I was proud that I returned home to West Virginia. Again, I woke up on Wednesday morning, and I questioned my decision to return home to West Virginia. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Doug Ivins, followed by Thornton Cooper. Doug Evans. Evans, sorry. Sorry. Um, as a former landlord and past director of Marshall University's LGBT outreach, I oppose this bill because I've seen discrimination in housing here in West Virginia, and in my capacity as director of Marshall's LGBT outreach, I was tasked with working to ensure that our LGBT students were successful in their college pursuits. However, students facing discrimination in both housing as well as the workplace oftentimes have <coughs> oftentimes struggle keeping up academically. This is why I oppose this bill. Essentially, students shouldn't have to struggle with these problems because they're struggling with issues with their family, issues with suicidality, all kinds of things. It discourages student success in our state colleges. Thank you. Thornton Cooper followed by Rick Wilson. My name's Thornton Cooper. I live in South Charleston. I used to work for the State Human Rights Commission 40 years ago, back in 1974 and 75. I strongly oppose this bill. Preemption is a bad idea, whether it's the federal government telling states that they can't do things at the state level, or states telling municipalities and counties they can't do things at the municipal or county level. This bill, if it's passed by the House, this will be another embarrassment for the people of West Virginia. It will, put, it will paint us as being bigoted, unwelcoming, 
and intolerant. I urge you to vote against this bill. Thank you. Thanks, sir. Rick Wilson, followed by Brandon Hanley. Thank you. My name is Rick Wilson. I'm with the American Friends Service Committee. I think I had an eloquent rant prepared, but in the interest of time, I'm going to make it very short and simply read a statement by Walmart, a company on wh with, whom, with which I'm not always on the same page. This is what Walmart had to say about a similar piece of legislation in Arkansas. Every day in our stores, we see firsthand the benefits of diversity and inclusion have on our associates, customers, and communities we serve. It all starts with the core basic belief of respect for the individual. And that means understanding and respecting differences and being inclusive of all people. We feel that this legislation is counter to that core basic belief and sends the wrong message about Arkansas. And this sends the wrong message about West Virginia. Bottom line, if we want West Virginia to be a laughing stock to the nation, a symbol of small mindedness and meanness, go ahead and run with this bill. If you want the state to provide a decent future for all its inhabitants, then run, don't walk away from it. Thank you. Thank you. Brandon Hanley, followed by Bennett Anderson. Uh, yes, my name is Brandon Holly, and I'm a pastor in Beckley, and I am in support of this bill. Uh, this bill opens up the door for SOGI ordinances that have been used across the country as things to uh, suppress the freedom of speech and the freedom of religion. Uh, many people have been fired because of their beliefs on same-sex marriage and, and things like that. Uh, there's firefighters in a firefighter in Atlanta who served for 30 years was fired because he had written a book on it. A, a lady who is a florist for 37 years is about to lose her home and everything because of that. This is not a good thing for business as well. And we have many business owners in our church, and I am very concerned about our free speech and our business owners' right to uh, take on clients or things based on their uh, freedom of religion as well. And also, this goes the other way. Our church has been uh, trashed in the media. We have seen uh, pornographic images loaded onto our Facebook page and all of these things since we have Thank stood you, up sir. against the Soji ordinances. Bennett Anderson, followed by Robert Sheet or Shot. I, <clears throat> excuse me, I am a return Peace Corps volunteer. Uh, while there are many things that I love and miss about Ukraine, I do not regret leaving a culture that actively discriminates and denies people like me. The intentions of House Bill 2881 may not uh, purposely choose to send this message of hate, uh, but that is what happens. Um, and I sincerely hope that today the people who are spited by this legislation does not tomorrow include the grandchildren and the great-grandchildren of people who support it. Thank you. Thank you. Robert Sheet followed. Sheets. I'm Robert Sheets. Followed by <clears throat> Natasha Kavinsky. Robert Sheets. I'm 64. I'm disabled. I live on limited income, and I'm a member of Charleston City Council and I'm a homosexual. In 2007, Charleston passed this uh, ordinance, er, the non-discrimination bill. Men and women, black and white, Republicans and Democrats, under a Republican administration, 26 heterosexuals and one homosexual voted to pass this bill. <clears throat> and then Mr. Moore says this bill will is meant to make West Virginia more business friendly. If you look at the Fortune 1000 companies, a majority of them have it in their employees' right. And they won't come to West Virginia if you're not in support of their employees because they want their employees to be productive and not only with the company, but out in the community. And it benefits everybody. And if we look at the Boy Scouts up Thank here. Thank you, sir. Your time is up. Natasha Kavinsky, followed by Paul Sheridan. That's Kavinsky, sir. Sorry. Ladies and gentlemen and delegates, good morning. My chosen name is Natasha Kavinsky. My given name and legal name at birth is William Holstein, Jr. I was born and raised in the wild, wonderful state of West Virginia, but as of late, it has become not so wonderful anymore. Why may you ask? Because of House Bill 2881, I'm here to speak out against this bill. First off, why is this bill even necessary, even warranted? 
Already in places that do not have any ordinances in place, a person can be fired for being LGBT or evicted from their homes for this very reason. And this is devastating on an emotional and a financial level as well. How do I know this? I have first-hand experience in this area. Over three years ago, I was fired from my job along with my wife. It has taken me, since then it has taken me a huge toll on my family with regards to finding employment, the mental fear of losing a job, the fear of not being hired, all because I'm transgender. It has taken up till now to get a financial footing. Under this bill, we would be stripped of the basic dignities and rights and be discriminated Thank you. against. Your time is up. Thank you. Paul Sheridan, followed by Casey Bertieshaw. My name is Paul Sheridan. I'm a resident of Charleston, and I'm proud to be part of a community that's willing to stand up and protect the human rights of all of its citizens. I stand in opposition to House Bill 2881. It's a cynical attempt to impose small-mindedness and fear from above um, at all costs. The first cost is local democracy, something that I think all Americans cherish. But it's not the only collateral damage for this cynical effort. Um, in my very brief search of the ordinances of Charleston, I found uh, Ordinance 86131, which provides uh, protection against discrimination for veterans uh, in city employment, which is not an aspect of discrimination which I can find covered in state law. That ordinance would die with this bill. I find lots of ordinances in the city of Charleston, I expect that in other places they exist as well, that make protected classifications Thank based you, on age and other things. Casey Bertieshaw followed by Ray Lambert. My name is Cassie Bertie Shaw, and I'm the policy director for the American Civil Liberties Union of West Virginia. The ACLU opposes House Bill 2881. The ACLU believes that cities have a right to self-determination and are entitled to do what's right for them, including putting into place non-discrimination ordinances. Local control is democracy in its purest form. Communities come together and craft solutions that are appropriate to their specific town. There's no need for interference by the state legislature. This bill would send West Virginia to the back of the pack. Forbidding non-discrimination ordinances codifies discrimination at a time when the country is moving towards greater acceptance of the LGBT community generally. Nearly 80% of Americans, including 70% of Republicans and 77% of observant Christians, support workplace protections for lesbian, gay, bisexual, and transgender people. While seven states have considered this type of discriminatory legislation, only one state has passed it. Thank you, ma'am. This would make West Virginia Ray Lambert, followed by Sherry Wong. I am Ray Lambert. I'm the chairman of the West Virginia Family Foundation. This hearing today is not about whether homosexuals should be granted non-discrimination status for their homosexual behavior. There are bills pending now in both houses on non-discrimination. Rather, this hearing is about whether our legislature should pass the state laws or should some cities and government entities pass laws which must invariably be enforced and adjudicated by the state? The answer is clear, no. Cities and government entities cannot usurp state laws, plain and simple. House Bill 2881 is a good bill, one that overturns the backdoor efforts of activists to usurp the authority of 134 legislators that readdress this same issue every year. Mr. Chairman, I say to all West Virginia legislators thank, thank you, in both sir. houses, your, your time pass is this up. bill. Sherry Wong, followed by Steve Williams. Hello, my name is Sherry Wong, and I reside here in the city of Charleston. I'm a restaurant owner here in the city, and I'm also founder of Breaking Bread. It's a food ministry and pantry that's served here on the East End. And our business culture is strong in its ethic of hard work, customer service, and of kindness and equality. We do not discriminate in staffing our associate base. And as for our customers, all are welcome to come into the bistro. We have very many 
backgrounds, we speak many languages, we have many faith paths. We love one another and our loved ones return to affection. It goes the same for me as a person. To refuse any of these folks we work with and serve for some placed value would not only be a, value, a violation of a plethora of statutes locally and nationally, but it'd be a violation of my own personal moral compass Thank you. on every level. Steve Williams followed by Jim Lewis. Good morning, my name is Steve Williams. I'm the mayor of the city of Huntington and I'm also here to represent the West Virginia Municipal League. The city of Huntington and the West Virginia Municipal League oppose House Bill 2881. The 11 members of the Huntington City Council voted unanimously to extend protection to all citizens in the city regardless of sexual orientation. We in Huntington have determined that there are those among us who have experienced the loneliness and pain of exclusion. Citizens in our community who are gay, lesbian, bisexual, or transgendered have every right to expect that they can sip from the fountain of community participation. That is our determination. It has no effect on any other community. The elected officers of the city of Huntington are the proper arbiter of this decision. House Bill 2881 is an unwarranted and unnecessary intrusion in the policy-making responsibility and do of the duly elected officials of the city of Huntington and all municipalities in the state of West Virginia. Thank you. Jim Lewis followed by Cat Williams. No applause. I'm Jim Lewis, an Episcopal priest, live here in Charleston, West Virginia, and you're going to get an instant uh, education in about 30 seconds. 40 years ago, 40 years ago, uh, people flocked, lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender people flocked to St. John's Episcopal Church in downtown Charleston. It's on the corner of Quarrier, Quarrier and uh, Sullivan Boulevard. They flocked there because they were looking for safety. And if you know about churches, they have red doors. Those red doors are places you can run for help and safety. The city of Charleston now does that, gives that kind of safety. I'll tell you what, here it is, quickly. If this bill sees the light of day, if it comes out of here and gets voted on and voted in, I'm gonna advise every clergy person and every lay person in this state to get, get big cans of red paint and paint those doors red. This bill should go down and not see the light of day. Thank you so much. Thank you. Cat Williams followed by Deborah Price. My name is Dr. Cat Williams. I'm a professor at Marshall University, a property owner, a landlord, a taxpayer, an active member of the Huntington community, and a proud West Virginian by choice. I am the LGBT liaison for Mayor Steve Williams' office and serve on his LGBT advisory committee. I am also married to a woman. She too is a taxpaying professional and a West Virginian by choice. We are proud to live in a city, Huntington, that sees fit to protect our rights. I am proud to be part of this community and want only the best for its future and the future of West Virginia. I want the students that I teach every semester to stay here. I want them to invest here. I want them to be proud to be here, to be West Virginians. Unfortunately, students, young people, leave this state in droves, and intolerance is one of the reasons they state. If this state wants to be economically successful, we need to open our arms to everyone, no matter race or sexuality. Please do not pass. Thank you. Deborah Price, followed by Charles Loeb. I'm here on behalf of Lisa Dooley to deliver remarks to you by Mayor John Manchester, uh, the mayor of Lewisburg. Um, Lisa is regrettably not able to be here this morning. House Bill 2881 represents a major step backward for West Virginia on many levels, and it should be defeated. First, it represents a slap in the face to local governments seeking to do what is best for their citizens, and it stands in marked contrast to the real progress made over the last few years in terms of home rule. If people in a local community, through their locally elected accountable municipal governments, choose to adopt local non-discrimination ordinances and resolutions, they should have the right to do so. Second, this bill attempts to thwart the natural checks and balances of local government. 
if the locally elected officials pass a non-discrimination ordinance and the electorate in that community is upset by it, they have the option to remove those elected officials from office at the next election and repeal the ordinance. Third, HB 2881 is bad for business. Tourism is a major piece of West Virginia economy, Thank and it you. is especially important Charles to Charles Loeb, like followed by Owen Reynolds. Thank you. My name is Charles Loeb. I'm a, a member of the Charles City Council from 1995 to 2007, where I was chair of our Rules and Ordinance Committee and the majority leader, uh, during which time we passed a hate crime bill, which included uh, uh, gays, uh, lesbians, and transgender uh, people as a protected class. Two points. First, as to the uniformity justification that falls flat on its face, if you do that, then you might as well start repealing all municipal ordinances because every city is different and adopts different ordinances from time to time as a reflection of their community values. More important, although none of these ordinances have much teeth, it's the importance of the statement they make, the symbol they make as an expression of their community values. This, for Charleston, is not just an expression of our tolerance of diversity, not just a statement that our community embraces diversity. It was and continues to be both our symbolic gesture and active demonstration that we celebrate diversity, Thank whatever you. your race, age, Owen and Reynolds, whatever. followed by Ted Brightwell. My name is Owen Reynolds, and I have lived in Huntington, West Virginia for 26 years and am currently attending the West Virginia University College of Law. This bill does not represent the West Virginia that I know, that is full of loving, accepting people. It represents the ugly stereotypes that so many people across this country have come to hold about our state. This is not just an LGBT issue. This is a human issue. Everyone deserves to be free from discrimination. Let us not repeat the mistakes of the past. Thanks to the efforts of people like Ty Bullock and places like Thurman, West Virginia and Huntington, we have gained positive national media attention. With the nation's eye still on us, we have the unique opportunity to stand up and say we are loving, we are caring, we are accepting. We do not discriminate. We are West Virginia. Thank you. Thank you. Ted, please keep the applause. Hello, my name is Ted Brightwell. I am owner of Visions Day Spa in Charleston, West Virginia. I came out as a gay man in 1973 when it was not cool to be gay. When I was 21, I, was, uh, I was, got my first apartment all by myself. I was a good tenant. My landlord came to me after three months and said, I don't want your kind here. Get out. When I worked at a downtown bar as a bartender, my, an efficiency ex expert came in and said to me, I don't want your kind here, get out. I was a great worker. I don't, when the city of Charleston passed the ordinance of non-discrimination, I would jump for joy. I was so happy because I do not want my young brothers and sisters to have to go through the devastation that I did at that time. Also, it was said that this bill is going to make West Virginia more business friendly so that the rules are more uniform. What kind of new business are we wanting for our state if the person coming in is going to say, hey, I'm going to open my business in West Virginia because I can hire the gays and then I can fire them. Thank you. Thank you. I, re I remind those no applause or booing. Justin Murdoch followed by Rain Cleaver. Justin Murdoch. I'm from Huntington, West Virginia. I'm a member of the Board of Fairness West Virginia. I live in Huntington with my husband and my family. I do run a business there. I would like to ask all the media, now that I have their attention for a moment in this room, first of all, I'd like you to ask Delegate Howell after this about what his remarks about natural law during the committee meeting went. I'd love to hear that explained. But furthermore, this bill claims to be about uniformity. If that's the case, there are in the bills in the House and the Senate that would also make the laws of this state uniform for LGBT people. As one of our legislators said very eloquently earlier this week on another issue, let's raise all the boats, not just the yachts. Uniformity is not the real goal of this bill. 
I propose that some enterprising delegate, if this bill does move forward, amend it as follows, a title amendment that would call this the Abolishing Local Liberties and Encouraging Bigotry Act to make it a little more clear. I propose the bill text be amended explicitly to state what this will do to LGBT Thank residents. Thank you. Rain Cleaver followed by Sean Schuttenberg. Good morning. I appreciate the opportunity to speak to you as part of this democratic process. As a Huntington resident though, I am shocked that I have to actually be here to fight for a bill that has already passed my city government. I was there in the council chamber when it was passed by our elected officials. It is ridiculous that we even have to be here today to discuss this. As a West Virginian by choice, and who has children who are West Virginian by birth. This is, would be another black eye for our state. We want economic development. We all want opportunities for our children, and this bill would be a step away from that. Thank you. Thank you. Sean Schulenberg, followed by Coy Flowers. Thank you. I'm Dr. Sean Schulenberg, a professor of political science at Marshall University. I teach courses on both economic policy making and sexuality, so I feel like I'm well informed here uh, to, to consider both, uh, both the very clear intentions of this bill, um, as we can see from every single speaker we've had here today is talking about LGBT and they're not talking about economic policy impacts. Um, but because we've had so many eloquent speakers talking, um, uh, in terms of LGBT rights, let me focus on the economic policy portion of this bill. Uh, as a professor, when I look and grade my students' papers on economic policy, usually I would expect them to have some type of research or data to support it. They say that it will support uh, and attract businesses. Meanwhile, against the bill, they say it's against. There's no data here. We have no data. You should not base an economic policy without having any data supporting it whatsoever. Um, if this were a paper in my class, I would grade it not because of its conclusion, but because there's zero evidence for it. It would be a failing grade. And again, pass a comprehensive Thank agenda. Thank you. Coy Flowers followed by John Jordan. Good morning. I'm Dr. Coy Flowers and I'm a physician in Lewisburg, West Virginia in Greenbrier County. I'm a business owner. We have over 80 employees, and we have an economic impact in the Green Bar Valley of over $75 million. So first, as a business owner, the premise that this bill is anti-business or pro-business is absurd. Businesses throughout West Virginia and the United States of America, 90% of the Fortune 500 companies have shown over and over that diversity is vitally important to businesses. In my practice, three of the 20 practitioners are lesbian or gay in West Virginia, adding to the economic impact and to the health of, of people in West Virginia. It's not uncommon for me to get what I call the phone calls, to have a dean or the director of HR of the West Virginia School of Osteopathic Medicine, where I'm on clinical faculty, to call me and say, as much as we as native West Virginians love our state, and we sometimes are blinded to the fact of our faults, people outside of West Virginia, they have audible images of banjos in the backwoods. John we need Jordan to change that. followed by Jack Hoplitzel. Thank you. I'm John Jordan, a pastor in Beckley, and uh, I stand in support of uh, this bill. And uh, I did come here to speak from a business standpoint. However, uh, due to the comments that have already been said, it is clear that the opposition to this, uh, to this bill, the agenda is to expand uh, civil liberties. And uh, those facilitating this agenda has been unsuccessful over the past few years to expand the state's non-discrimination code, so they have begun to target local municipalities. Their success in a few of our major communities is simply an attempt to do an end run around the state legislature. Some may ask, what does this have to do with business? Well, all businesses within our state are important, including those <clears throat> who hold religious convictions contrary to those with the agenda to expand protected classes to include sexual orientation and gender identity. Time will not permit me to share case after case across the nation where expanding protected you, classes. Jack Hopblitzel followed by Lida Shepard. 
Hello, my name is Jack Cobbletel. I'm a Charleston resident, and my father was a member of this body 30 years ago. I'm an at, a candidate at large for Charleston City Council and a registered Republican. I oppose House Bill 2881. One size fits all does not work out of Charleston any more than it works out of Washington, D.C. I have not been able to locate a single report or story since Charleston included sexual orientation in its anti-discrimination ordinances where a business has not come or has left the city because sexual orientation is included. Please focus on real economic reform and real educational reform and give cities the freedom and counties the freedom to make their communities welcoming for everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Lida Shepard followed by Jeff Allen. Good morning. It's wonderful to see all these freedom-loving people in here this morning. My name is Lida Shepard. I'm with the American Friends Service Committee. And of the many things that I love about West Virginia, you could, I could wax poetic about her unparalleled beauty, our rich history of fairness and equality. But one of the things that I boast about when, quite frankly, I have friends who live in San Francisco and New York, and they ask me quizzically, why do you, why do you choose to live in, in your home state of West Virginia? And I speak to just the, the experience that I have daily of people being kind to one another, to being open to each other. I think that's something we all celebrate and that we cherish about West Virginia. This bill, House Bill 2888, 2881, isn't who we are. It's narrow, it's bigoted, it's a legislative power grab. It is not who we are. It's not the message that we want to send to the world. It's not the message we want to send to our children. Mountaineers are always free, except for you, except for you. Thank you. No. Jeff <laughs> Allen, you. followed by Anthony Magestro. Good morning. My name is Jeff Allen, and I'm the executive director of the West Virginia Council of Churches and the United Methodist Pastor. In our 2015 Public Policies Issue Booklet, the West Virginia Council of Churches has adopted the following statement. People of whatever sexual orientation must be accepted with respect, compassion, and sensitivity. Every sign of unjust discrimination in, their, in this regard must be avoided. We believe that everyone in this room, and indeed every human being, is created in the image of God, and is due the respect that someone created in God's image deserves. When we start putting labels on people and acting on those labels by refusing services, such as housing or employment, we are disrespecting the image that that person is created in. That image of God that we are all created in is the reason why we have anti-discrimination laws, so that we may all be treated equally. In the absence of a state law that includes the entire LGBTQT community Thank against you. discrimination, municipal Anthony laws are- Magestro followed by Jill Rice. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I, I come here today as a resident, a proud resident of the city of Charleston, Charleston's East End, and a proud parent. As a resident of the East End, I live in a community that is vibrant, accepting, diverse, and eclectic, and I love it here. I'm proud to live in a, in a town that has a law that protects all residents from discrimination in that city. But I come here more to talk to you as a parent. I have three adult children, and I'm speaking on their behalf today because they're not in this state. They're all getting educated, working on jobs, they're professionals, they're the kind of people the employers say we need to have in West Virginia to expand our businesses. But they don't want to live in a place where people are discriminated against. They don't want to live in a place where their friends and their neighbors and their coworkers have to worry about their job, have to worry about their housing, have to worry about basic human rights. I'm proud of them because they don't even understand the other argument. They, they ask me, why is anybody even opposed to this? It's not a debate to them. There is no other side to this argument. It's clear this bill is bad. Thank you. Jill Rice, followed by Elizabeth Walker. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. My name is Jill Rice, and I'm a lawyer with the law firm of Dinsmore Scholl, and I'm here today on behalf of the ACLU. Um, I spoke before the committee, as you know, and I really wanted to point out today that the purpose of this bill states it's to improve interstate commerce and to benefit the businesses, businesses, organizations, and employers seeking to do business in our state and to attract ones to our state. The higher a company ranks on Fortune Magazine's list of the most successful businesses, the more likely it is to provide comprehensive protections and benefits 
to the LGBT employees. This bill is inherently inconsistent with the values that these companies value themselves. They have div strong non-discrimination policies, strong diversity policies. I talked about Procter and Gamble's during the committee meeting this week, and even Toyota has was noted through by Diversity Inc. and recognized as a top 10 company for LGBT employees in 2012 and 2013. Thank you. Elizabeth Walker followed by Gerald Beller. I am Elizabeth Walker and I am an Episcopal priest in the state of West Virginia. And I do rise today to speak in opposition to House Bill 2881. I believe this bill is a thinly veiled attempt to discriminate against the LGBT population in West Virginia. Make no mistake, there is a sizable population of lesbian, gay, bisexual, and transgender West Virginians in each county, each municipality, each district. I am one of those persons. I grew up in Greenbrier County, was educated at Concord College, taught in Raleigh County, and have been a pastor at two churches in Mer Mercer County and Jackson County. I returned to Greenbrier County 19 years ago, and I live in Lewisburg. I'm a proud West Virginian, hopefully a faithful Episcopalian, and I'm proud to call another born and bred West Virginian who taught for 35 years in our public school system my wife. We've lived in the state for 26 years. We were able to be married in 2010. I'm in opposition to this bill. Thank you. Gerald Beller, followed by Alan Witt. I'm Jerry Beller. Thank you for the opportunity to speak on this matter. A lot of eloquence this morning. I wanted to draw attention to the US Supreme Court Romer versus Evans. Has anybody ever heard of it? 1996, in which the Supreme Court said that to pass a law at the state level to prohibit opportunities by municipalities to pass anti-discrimination laws concerning sexual orientation was a violation of the rational basis test. That's not the strict scrutiny, it's a rational basis test of the 14th Amendment. That's a six to three decision. It's not one of those five to four decisions that's so close. It was decided by Justice Kennedy, the same person who was about to approve, I think, in his decision, uh, a, a prohibition against uh, uh, laws which prevent same-sex marriage. And I, it seems to me that there is a constitutional test on this matter. If we want uniformity in the law, pass a law or include LGBT uh, prohibitions within the current hate crimes law, rather than Thank constantly you, preventing that from Alan happening. Alan Witt, followed by our final speaker, Tom Lane. My name is Alan Witt. I'm the president of the Family Policy Council of West Virginia. This bill complies with, with uh, Romer, by the way. It's uh, been constitutionally challenged and upheld. It is not violation of that. Um, let's talk honestly about this. This is a good meeting. This, this room is called the People's House. This is where this conversation should take place. Uh, everybody's been pretty positive, and this is how we should do public policy. Um, this bill is not about discrimination. This bill is about public policy. Now, uh, as far as the local rule goes, at the very moment, we have some country town install um, a protected class of the KKK or some other hate group. That argument changes. I've already had conversations with many of you and your leadership. Then 2881 would say, no, we can't let a town give protection to a, 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 to a class of people that are full of hate. Those decisions uh, should be decided here. What we cannot have is this. Yesterday, a dozen members of these volunteer legislators received this hate threat. Thank you, sir. We Tom cannot Lane, have our final hate speaker. threats. Please can. Thank you, sir. Tom Lane, our final speaker. Good morning, everyone. I'm Tom Lane. I serve on Charleston City Council and I have been the president for the past 12 years. About 10 years ago, Charleston passed its ordinance prohibiting bias and discrimination on the basis of sexual orientation. It was a unanimous vote of City Council. Since that time, we have not had one single adverse incident, but rather, the city of Charleston has thrived and perhaps no area more than our East End which houses this beautiful state capital 
and our largest population of gay people. On a personal note, I think all of us have the goal of our family members coming home, living in our communities. I have a nephew who is gay. He didn't choose it. He had great anguish in coming to the realization that he was gay. And I join all my my brother in particular, but my other brothers and sisters and mother, and wishing that Addison would come home someday. And if he does, I hope he enjoys the benefits of the Charleston Ordinance. I join Mayor Williams, my colleagues on city council, and other council members from other areas of the state in opposition to Bill 2881. Thank, you, thank and, you. And thank you all for attending. If anyone has any written comments and would like to give them to the committee staff, you're free to do so. Again, thank you for coming. This has been live coverage of a public hearing from the House of Delegates Chamber at the State Capitol in Charleston. House Bill 2881 has been recommitted to the House Government Organization Committee. It had been on first reading and ready to go through the process on the House floor. It should be noted that the Senate Majority Leader said yesterday that the Senate would not take up this bill if it passed the House. For more about this story, tune in to the legislature today, tonight at 6.30 on West Virginia Public Broadcasting. I'm Beth Voorhees. Thanks for joining us. Good morning. Thank you.